Okay, welcome back. So before we jump to the action provider, I want to show you something that I forgot in the last video. So uh, inside of the parse message here, let's console log the state uh, or sorry, this dot state. So um, I, I mentioned that the message parser re receives the state from the chatbot and we can use that uh, inside of the parse message. So if we log out the state, then uh, we'll say hello. And you can see that in this uh, action bot, sorry, in the chatbot state, uh, we have a messages array. And uh, if we keep writing, then you can see that we have access to read this state in the uh, message parser. Now, um, it's not very interesting right now, but say that we wanted to do something based on what the current state of the chatbot is. So remember that we can define our own state um, inside of the config. So if we go to the config and we say state and we say, um, let's say movie titles and an array and we are defining that here and that should be merged with our state. So if we go back to the browser and say hello world, now you can see that we have the messages array but we also have the movie titles that we defined in the config. So what's interesting about this is we can go back to the message parser and do something like um, maybe if the state, this state movie titles one equals con air, then we'll log. I am Nicholas Cage. So if the message now is hello world and this dot state dot move titles and the second element of that array is con air, then we'll log out. Hi, I'm Nicholas Cage. So I'm just going to check. It's, uh, it's uppercase, okay? So let's make sure we have that as well. And now if we say, hello world, we get, hi, I'm Nicholas Cage in return because now we are also checking the, uh, the state here. Okay, so that's just, I just want to show you that. Um, we're gonna take a look at that uh, later as well when we do data fetching. But now we need to take a look at the action provider as well. So I mentioned last time that the action provider kind of is responsible for making things happen. So if we open the action provider up, uh, you can see that we here have a create chatbot message, which is a function that is passed in. And we have a set state function that set state function comes from the chatbot. So we can use that to manipulate the state of the chatbot. So let's first create a method here that allows us to do that. And we're going to call it set chatbot state. And it will take a message. And then we'll do this set state. And now it's really important that we don't overwrite the state that was before because um, that'll, mm, <laughs> that'll kind of make it difficult for us to use that state anywhere else in the application. And it, it'll end up breaking it. So we want to make sure that we copy over what was there before and we just add to that. So to do that, we'll take the state 
and we'll uh, we'll pass a callback function here. So we'll take the state and we'll spread that out. And then we'll do messages, which is the messages array. And then we'll spread state dot messages. And then we'll add the final message. Okay. So now we have a method that will allow us to set a chatbot um, or add a chatbot message to the state. So what we want to do now is uh, create a action that we can use in our message parser. So let's say that we want to respond to hello world. So let's create a new chatbot message. We'll say hello world handler. And we'll create a new chatbot message with this create chatbot message. And we'll say Then we'll use this set chatbot message and we'll pass that in. All right, so now we created a handler. And what's interesting is this action provider, we have access to that inside of our message parser. So let's remove this and let's remove this. And now instead we'll say this action provider, hello world handler. So we can call this uh, method here on the action provider because we've defined it inside of here. Does that make sense? So we have the method here, this whole class is passed to the message parser after we initialized it. And now we can start calling these methods. So if we go back to our browser now, we say hello world. Now we can see that the chatbot is putting up responses. And that's kind of how it works. You define responses in the action provider and you use the message parser to decide which response to activate. And you control all of that yourself. So it makes it very flexible in terms of what you want your bot to respond to. And you can decide the level of complexity in terms of the message parsing as well. So that's it for the action provider. And next up, I'll take a look at how we can kind of customize the CSS a little bit and then we'll look into custom components as well. So see you there.